So there's a blind spot in sports nutrition. It centers around recovery, the adaptive response, physiological durability. Athletes are about performance. And translated into us civilians, us weekend warriors, that just means results. That just means getting the body to work better. Physiological fitness. And I don't care if you're an Olympic athlete, a world champion, a weekend warrior, the greatest generation, the next generation, a type 2 diabetic or a type A personality. This is a universal conversation because when you go inside the body, deep inside us, we are more alike than we are different. And what makes the body work is food. What makes it work well is good food. What makes it perform is great food. So the universal message here today is physiological adaptation. Whoever you are, you're here and you're trying to go there. And there is higher ground. So as I like to say, human performance nutrition is a higher form of sports nutrition because it fuels for physiological performance first. And physiological performance applies to everyone. So if you think about food, if you think about food, food does three things, or there's three pillars to, to why we eat food beyond the joy of eating. The first one is fueling for energy. The second one is building matter. And the third one, kind of the blind spot, it's conditioning function, conditioning physiological function. And what I mean by that is fueling for energy is about replenishing depleted glycogen stores, you know, rebuilding matter is really kind of a protein conversation, amino acids. This physical fitness or physiological fitness through food comes from conditioning physiological function. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So food does things to the body over time. There's a compounding effect to the food that we eat. And, it, and great food compounded over time delivers a performance advantage. That conditioning of function doesn't occur in a day, in a week, in a month. It occurs over a long period of time. So the idea is if you can eat well in a day, it may not make a big difference. But if you compound that over time, that's where the performance gains occur. Physiological adaptation, physiological recovery, physiological reju rejuvenation, durability occurs over that conditioning period. Just like training in the gym, we can train our body with food. So when you talk about food and performance, there's three things that I focus on. Activation, <laughs> modulation, and protection. What I mean by activation is, think of it as one concept, maximizing, sustaining energy output. What do I mean by that? Your endothelium is a single cell lining lines your entire vascular system and you want that thing to work. You want vascular capacity. Vascular capacity comes from the biochemistry of eating nutrient-dense foods. The science is pretty clear on that. So whether it's your capillaries, if you're worried about macular degeneration, or it's your big vessels in your legs if you're an athlete, whoever you are. Let's talk about modulation. Modulation, think about your immune system. You don't want your immune system too jacked and you don't want it too, too low, you want it right in the middle. I can give you hundreds of examples of elite athletes training for the Olympic Games, the Super Bowl, uh, the Tour de France, where they got on a bus, they got on a plane, and they got taken out by a common cold. Most athletes' immune system is compromised because of their higher training. So you want immune system strength to provide you physiological durability during your training regimen. And the science is pretty clear. Those athletes that can maintain 80 plus percent of their training regimen leading into a big event always perform better. Let's talk about the third concept, protection. And when you think about physiological protection, that's actually performance. So what I mean by that is reduction of oxidative damage, reduction of inflammatory response. When you rip your body down, there you have a, a, an incremental inflammatory response. And to be able to recover fast and improve that inflammatory response or reduce it, that's performance advantage. When it comes to oxidative damage or oxidative stress, think of the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the power cell, and, or the power engine in every cell. And when you train hard, the mitochondria get taken out by oxidative stress. So if you want to preserve mitochondrial density in your eyes, in your lungs, in your brain, in your muscles, you have to eat great food because oxidative stress will de degrade and destroy mitochondrial density. Think of it as engines per cell. You want more engines per cell. Athletes work really, really hard to develop mitochondrial density and they take two steps forward and they take one step back and they don't recover fast. And so what reduction of inflammation, reduction of oxidative damage can do for the body is make it perform. As a former professional athlete, I can tell you that the difference between good and great is simple. It's nothing more than an authentic, relentless execution of fundamentals. Authentic when it comes to food is eat great food, eat real food, eat whole food. Relentless is daily. Not much is going to change until you change something that you do every day and compound that over time. Execution, in the end, between what you know and what you do, between the science, between the compliance, that gap 
that behavioral gap of doing it every day is a problem. And then fundamentals. Fundamentals are great food, real food, whole food. The problem is for elite athletes, you got to be consuming consuming double digit servings of fruits and vegetables every day. For a Dilbert cubicle man, it's nine servings a day. That's the federal minimum. And for women, it's seven plus servings a day. So I like to round up. If you're off the couch, if you're doing stuff, you got to be consuming 10 servings of fruits and vegetables every day. The problem is, is that you can't, you don't, or you won't. And how do you bridge that gap? We all have blind spots, and blind spots are what we don't know, we don't even know. I hope, hopefully I've given you some food for thought, an invitation to learn more, and the idea of bridging this gap between what you know and what you do is nutritional execution. Plant powders, produce concentrates, this is matter that matters for your body. This can condition function, whether you're an elite athlete or you're a soccer mom, and everyone in between. If you'd like to learn more about our programs, and our products. Give it the health food agent that shared this with you, and we'll see you on the field of play. <laughs> protein. Forgot about protein. That's what I want to do. You know, the urban myth of protein, you know, whey, dairy, plants, animals. You know, dairy in the end works. Whey works. The problem is, is that inflammation thing, that chronic inflammation thing compounded over time. You know, it, if, we, if we can get all the upside of protein and none of the downside, that's in plants. Let's do that next. <laughs>